The first presentation will be devoted to the current status of the theory of Casino Evadeva. The Uh, the current evolution of the biological medical development is related to the medicine and evolutionary epidemiology. To solve the problems of medicine that haven't been solved yet, it turns out that evolutionary approach is armed uh, doctors and biologists with the new tools to reach our goals. New disciplines exist, the Dovian medicine, evolutionary epidemiology, that consider new information from a different angle, new information for doctors. Evolutionary oncology has different areas. Evolutionary oncology is a part of evolutionary approach to science and health. There are different areas. Comparative oncology that has been developing since uh, the beginning, early 19th century. Somatic evolution of tumor cells were developed in the middle of the previous century, in the 1970s. There are different hypotheses related to anti-cancer selection. We develop our understanding of the evolutionary role of the tu of tumors starting from the 1970s. So there are a great deal of publications, several books were published in different fields of evolutionary psychology. Uh, uh, oncology. One of these books are, are, is our book. The understanding of evolutionary oncology, we formulated stepping from different principles, uh, general principles uh, that are related to genetics. It's the principle of gene competition and the principle of genome evolution. It turns out uh, that uh, from uh, common understanding, the evolutionary role of tumor evolves. Uh, the theory of genome evolution and the origin of evolutionary novel genes. Is it the theory the impotence of the development was made by the Book of Honor that was published in 1970, evolution that is called evolution by gene duplication. It considered not only the main mechanisms of the origin of novel genes, but also connected uh, the evolution with the origin, with the development of new genes. But this book didn't give the answer to the question as to where these evolutionary new genes worked. It was suggested that probably in the same cells, but we know that there is no an automatic connection between the emergence of new genes and uh, the appearance of new progressive uh, uh, characteristics of science. In fever, uh, they demonstrate uh, uh, the similar properties, uh, the diversity of uh, else, lymph cells and uh, lymphocytes are different in the codas, uh, codo, codata and in vertebras, and you, uh, many new cells were needed. But what was the origin of these new cells? We formulated uh, a hypothesis uh, that it's uh, the tumors, uh, tumors, uh, tumors uh, that could play an evolutionary role by providing extra cells masses to, for expression of new evolving genes emerging in DNA of the germ cells. We suggest uh, that uh, this hypothesis is complementary to the owner hypothesis uh, of the gene duplication evolution where we say about the connection of this process with their processes uh, that excessive uh, cellular mass can provide. Uh, these are the diagrams. First, evolutional new gene emerges. emerges. It can't ex be expressed due to the gene competition because there is no place for expression. But we know that uh, 
in the tumor in the excessive cells, so there is a place for new gene expression so they can ex be expressed there if some weak functions emerge. And we know that in protein uh, uh, molecules there are a great number of weak functions, uh, uh, weak feedback our reverse connections emerge, uh, they are reinforced, and it can lead to the emergence of a new type of cells where these new novel genes can be expressed. And this, uh, uh, this is later on, is inherited by uh, genetic and epigenetic mechanisms. Uh, we About these mechanisms, uh, Mr. Yankovsky will be talking, and Mr. Matif will be talking about uh, this. Uh, genetic and epigenetic mechanisms. This hypothesis was uh, formulated quite long ago when we were young. Yeah. But during this time, a great number of data uh, has been accumulated. In my book that I wrote, uh, there are a great number of references, more than 1,000 references. Uh, they can support the evolution and role of tumors. Let's look at this slide. There is a evolution a pathology versus pathology paradox. And it turns out uh, that pathogens and pathologies may play evolutional role. Viruses, bacteria, molecular pathogens, uh, um, mutations, prospective uh, hopeful monsters. This is a paradoxic situation. It um, made scientists to think differently. It turns out uh, that tumors, uh, they have a great number of properties uh, due to evolution. Many tumors can be inherited. Hereditary cancer syndromes are quite frequent comparing to syndromes, other hereditary syndromes. Tumors are quite widely spread through the all throughout phylogenetic tree. Oncogenes and tumor suppressors, uh, they are the oldest gene classes. Many tumors never kill their hosts. Moreover, and this interesting thing, and paradoxic ones, it says uh, convergence of uh, tumorgenic and embryogenic sig signaling pathways. Why are they so similar? It's not quite clear. We know that tumors have the property uh, can be uh, that can be used in evolution. First of all, it's uh, uh, extra cell masses property. Tumors could provide extra cell masses uh, with a high bar potential, uh, potential, bio potential, and they are needed uh, in evolution. Many genes can be activated by tumor, and they don't work in normal tissues. Tumor cells can differentiate with the loss of malignancy. They have more for genetic potential, like it's uh, shown in this picture, these uh, horns, cutaneous horns, horns. And very interesting property that humans can demonstrate tumors. They have the structure of atypic tissues and organs. Tumors, like normal strong uh, organs, uh, they have stroma, parenchyma, Parenchyma consists of uh, the stem cells, uh, differentiated cells. Later on, we will recollect them that tumors can be considered as uh, typical organs. And there are a great number of examples when tumors have played the role in evolution. So on the slide, you can see the examples. It's a ratio between melanomas and um, micromelanoformas in uh, fish, uh, Xephophorus fishes. It's emergence of new organs in plants. It's a placenta, placenta. It's a tumor-like organ uh, that uh, probably um, uh, emerged from uh, retroviruses in uh, ancestral mammals. There is a great list of tumor-like organs uh, that probably uh, started from tumors. Even uh, the whole organism may uh, be induced from tumors, for example, in uh, other marine species. Uh, it's quite 
large information. The hypothesis became a theory. It was uh, shown in the book. That, uh, it now is in my book, it's, and it's published in three languages, and uh, the process still continues. I uh, called this theory the theory of Carson-Evadeva. What is a carson Deva? What does it mean? It's the theory that combines three types of biological development. There are three types, evolutionary, normal, embryonal, and neoplastic development. Our theory combines all the three types of development in one theory. And the title was uh, originated in Cassina embryonic and Cassina eva diva. Uh, the Cassina eva diva, uh, this theory uh, started uh, when a certain kind of protein was uh, developed by our science, scientists. And Cassina eva diva was studied by uh, academician Seversov, who developed the understanding. Uh, stipulating uh, that no, um, uh, the whole ontogenesis can evolve. It's a well-justified theory. We added up one more dimension, ecological dimension, and we consider, as I've already said, three types of development integrated in one theory. We formulated this in a kind of a diagram where different types of development are interconnected with arrows. These arrows, uh, they mean uh, their connection or participation in the processes. It's obvious uh, that uh, there is a likeness uh, of, uh, with the central dogma of molecular ideology. Uh, but there is some prohibition. The central dogma, there is a prohibition to transmit the genetic information from proteins to the nuclear acids. And here we have the prohibition, the evolution of the normal development. Overall normal development can't evolve due to restrictions, development to the lethal developments. If they are infringed, the development of the whole body can be affected. Uh, there are intermediary forms or transition forms that, that can overcome this prohibition. Our theory doesn't contradict uh, the existing biological theories. Uh, the slide shows seven biological theories. Our theories doesn't contradict with these biological theories. It explains uh, their uh, things. The theory of progressive evolution doesn't explain the origin of the transitional forms, but we can explain. Uh, why uh, there are no transitional forms? Uh, because uh, they are not in paleological, paleontological uh, uh, history. And we don't understand how the progressive evolution happens. But somehow it happens. We explain uh, in such a way uh, the transitional forms, the transitional population of human bearing organisms, uh, where restrictions related to the development of no develop to normal de of normal development are cancelled, so that the population of the human bearing species can be considered as a traditional form, transitional forms. Also, we explain. Uh, the uh, cancer testis antigen. Why cancer testis antigen? Why do these genes work in testicles and in, in different tumors and even in the brain? We explain this because uh, these are the evolutionary novel genes uh, that work in tumors. In the similar way we explain so the, explains the phenomena, for example, related to evolution of the adaptive immunity when the cancellation of some, several genes may lead to the emergence of the um, complicated functions. Uh, the classical theories, they can't explain this phenomenon. 
how these coincidences may happen. Also, we explain a very interesting thing. We explain the origin of a tumor-like uh, organs, evolution of new organs, such as the placenta, the tumor, the prostate. They have uh, the great number of uh, tumorous characteristics. Uh, uh, such organs as the breast and the prostate, they are characterized by a uh, high risk of the uh, cancerogenesis. Uh, they have uh, the invasion um, stage, but uh, this invasion stage is regulated. All these organs, so they are evolutionary young. And it turns out, interestingly, if you consider this Carson Nevadeva diagram, this diagram on the right, you can see the tumor as an organ, as an atypic tumor organ. But on the left, uh, you can see tumor like organs, and evolution of them can lead to the normal organs. Tumors as organs and tumor like organs, uh, they are traditional state and this ratio cancer never deva has the sense the implication uh, it can describe how the placenta the breast the prostate uh, can emerge in our uh, placenta placental ancestors it can describe complicated notions for a new organ to emerge a tumor-like condition as a traditional state is needed. And these successive steps of evolution can be described by these diagrams. And these diagrams can be used in the mathematical theory that is called the theory of categories. Now it's been developing. Apart from these explanations, each theory should have several properties. Uh, the theory should predict, it should be predictable, it should have predictable value. Some of these predictions are listed here, but not all of them. In one of the presentations later, Andrei Makashov uh, will talk about one more prediction. Here we have, we have four of them. The first one, the first predictors, tumors may be selected, selected for new organi uh, organism functions. For example, here uh, the goldfish hoods. We showed in our experiments uh, this kind of hood. It's an experimental tumor. And this organ uh, was selected for thousands of years, and later it became an organ. It has uh, the following properties. It's symmetrical, it's non-malignant, but uh, the tumor property is uh, that it is constantly growing and can reach quite large sizes. It's a tumor-like organ, and it's predicted by our theory. Next uh, great prediction is the prediction about uh, the activation of a new genes in tumors. One of them is presented here on the slide. It's PBOV1 gene. It's related to the positive uh, outcome in patients suffering from breast cancer. And it's very interesting. We suggested that it may be a tumor suppressor. Uh, some are people, so they confirmed this. Some papers, uh, they revealed uh, all the interesting results. This uh, gene uh, happened de novo. And it was proved in other papers as well. It's a fantastic situation, but it's proved in literature. We show that not only separate genes, but the classes of genes can be de novo. In the right bottom corner, uh, the curves describe these evolutionary new genes. Uh, cancer uh, genes uh, that encode uh, um, uh, non-coding 
RNA and cancer test genes. Uh, we found out uh, that the class of uh, uh, testicular cancers uh, antigens, they are de novo genes, and it's proved in the papers of other workers. Andrei Lukashov showed uh, this is uh, the bottom green line uh, is relates to the non-coding RNA. The majority of evolutionary genes uh, that emerged during five, six millions of years, uh, they are the representatives of the non-coding uh, RNA genes. The characteristics the, of some of uh, these evolutionary new genes uh, that work in tumors, uh, it shows uh, that in this experiment we described 100 such genes. And let's uh, look how they are expressed in 32 TS and TCGA tumors. There are genes among them uh, that work in all the tumors, and there are uh, tumors uh, where all these genes work. This slide shows uh, the probable connection of our discovered genes uh, with the development of a universal tumor diagnosis and tumor anti-tumor vaccines. We suggest that uh, the genes that, are that we are discovered at the evolutionary new express in tumors, tumors that's a new biological phenomenon, uh, and uh, we are called these genes, TC, tumor spe specifically expressed genes. Next prediction, and it's uh, the main uh, essence of the hypothesis that uh, evolution and new genes that they express in tumors and they, they acquire new functions. And uh, it's related to the tumor differentiations in new direction. And stepping from this suggestion, uh, we studied uh, the evolution in new genes of fishes. And on the model of the zebra fish genes, so we showed uh, that evolutionary new genes in, of fish they can acquire new functions that fish uh, don't have. Uh, and uh, there are such functions, so lung development, such as lung development, uh, cerebral development, uh, breast development. Uh, uh, these functions, uh, they are absent in fishes, uh, but they uh, appear in fishes and they will express in a tumors, in fish tumors, uh, acquiring such properties. We showed uh, this not only in silica, but in vitro in experiments. Uh, the expression of these genes in the placenta or uh, in the brain. It turns out uh, that some genes uh, that we described in zebra fish, uh, they work, they participate in different functions development, progressive functions development. And several genes participate in this. Uh, now we are talking about some new gene networks uh, that are very important. The article was published last year on this topic uh, where this suggestion was published uh, that genes determine progressive uh, traits in humans originated in fish and uh, were first expressed in fish tumors. Uh, one more point, the last prediction. Let's look. In this book, theoretical and mathematical aspects of uh, morphogenesis was published in 1987. Only 12 oncogenes were known at that time. It was predicted that the number of oncogenes should coincide or should match approximately the number of cells of the uh, in a, of a human being. Time passed. Uh, the number of types, uh, uh, number of cells of a human was studied. It turns out that this meta-analysis, uh, more than 400 types of different cells uh, can be described, uh, human cells and uh, a great number of oncogenes were described in different database. Uh, approximately the similar number of oncogenes were described in humans. Uh, 
its first prediction, and we predicted next, we predicted that oncogenes should evolve parallelly uh, to the differentiating genes. Uh, the work that was published, the paper that was published last year, it was shown that, in fact, three classes of genes, oncogen suppressors of the tumor cells and differentiation genes, uh, they evolve parallelly. This slide, uh, this slide shows this, and next slide shows as class two one uh, involves uh, oncogenes, uh, suppression genes, and uh, housekeeping genes. We show that oncogenes, so they evolve parallelly to differentiation genes. Uh, the processes of oncogenesis and evolution, they run parallelly. What kind of conclusion can be made? The conclusion can be made that we create a new biological theory that we called Carson and Evadeva, Evadeva. It comprises, it uh, put together all the three types of evolutional development. It explains the phenomena that can't be explained uh, previously. It combine, comprises different biological theories and uh, that are proved by experimental data.